Hello everyone and welcome to another episode in the world of Ford Focus Mark 1s and in this episode I am rebuilding an inlet manifold assembly for Nick's CL, the George, Project George, the George I should say, the George. The car that keeps on bringing up problem after problem every time I see it and have any sort of message from Nick. Um, I'm sure Nick will tell everybody that uh, every time he messages me, it's, oh, what's gone wrong now? And it's kind of like that. He's getting fed up, I'm getting fed up. But we're winning. And we are getting there. And we're winning slowly. And because Nick is willing to invest in his Mark 1, I can help him out there. Um, and he certainly has uh, come up trumps with some of the parts that he's bought. And one of the jobs that we discussed in the last episode, um, and this is really an important job in Mark 1s, because the inlet manifold, as we are going to discuss um, in this episode, yes, thanks to many components falling over, um, this is an area of, actually, it's been an area of minor problems over the many years. And there hasn't been many issues with them. But over time, what I'm finding now is, I believe very strongly that many Mark 1s are running on very inefficient inlet manifolds that are not producing the sort of flow, airflow I'm talking about, that is actually conducive to an efficient running engine and therefore your performance is going to lack. And in a 1.4 focus and probably a 1.6 automatic, where the performance in those two particular variants of a Mark 1 is very, very marginal, you really need to get the most efficient performance from every one of those components. And we're going to go through a number of components that builds up into this inlet manifold assembly. You might ask what these injectors are doing here. Well, that's going to be a little bit of a bonus because I've, uh, we're going to do some service exchanging. Um, a lot of these components have come from my spares. Um, that have been refurbished and are good and have been tested to work very efficiently on my own car uh, and Nick's going to benefit from that and uh, enjoy driving George a bit more so this is going to be more of a two-part in this series of Project George um, and it's a massive excuse to show people exactly how to rebuild a Mark 1 inlet manifold from scratch and understand the problems because we have had many problems. Now, those of you who have watched the last episode, which wasn't really an episode, it was more of an update uh, on Project George, you will know that we had many different issues with regards to actually unbolting the inlet manifold, um, namely um, seized screws, um, mainly. Um, this car has definitely been near the sea and this isn't the only department that that car has given Nick some real headaches and actually the, the, the job that I'm going to discuss in the next episode when you do see Nick and George in the flesh um, when we actually fit this manifold is basically the story of more snapping bolts and this time it could have been curtains for that engine so uh, yeah and it's something that we have covered before. But anyway, I'm going to get cracking into the rebuild of this inlet manifold. And as I rebuild this manifold, we're going to look at this together. I'm going to show you exactly how everything performs, what it's supposed to look like, and how it's actually beneficial to rebuild this and clean it from scratch as much as possible. And the old school, uh, some of the old school tuning tips and benefits, well, I would say tuning, I say we can't tune a Mark 1, but we can make it so efficient that the car tunes itself to a much more efficient level where it's using less fuel and it's going quicker. And that is a plus point. There is no point in doing power steering changes and coil pack changes, HT lead changes, without actually looking at the nerve centre of how air flows into your engine. Now, obviously, this video is specific to 1.4 and 1.6 Sigma's ZTEC SEs as they're badged in a focus. The 1.82 litre ZTEC has its own plastic intake manifold, which is very similar but different, but it's very similar. And a lot of what I'm going to say will apply. So this will be a nice video for all Mark 1 lovers. Um, and you will all take something away and get some benefits of old school experience with how to make an inlet manifold efficient. Let's start. So, switch around. Hello TV. 
I was watching the TV last night while cleaning all this up. And as you can see, I have been using a couple of products, carbon intake cleaner, more or less, and GT85, I need a torch. I'm gonna to need that in a second. And a couple of tools you're going to need. You're gonna need an eight mil or an eight mil socket, quarter inch ratchet, preferably, a T15, and a T20, preferably a bit set or screwdriver, whatever, just in, in any type of form. So Torx, T15, T20, and an eight mil spanner or socket, whichever one, that's all we need. And plenty of dirty rags, it's as simple as that. Now, this is the layout we have here. So we have right in front of us, a couple of new components. We have got, because of the issue that I'm gonna mention straight away, is we have a second hand inlet manifold so we have 1.4 or 1.6 stamped here ford here and a recycling symbol which is ridiculous and the finish code uh, just over here well the, the not the finish code the uh the actual uh main code for the uh part number but uh yeah it's uh it's all here and uh it's all being cleaned up to an absolute t and i'm going to explain why that is crucial in a second. But why did we have to buy a second-hand manifold and a second-hand throttle body? Well, why? I'll tell you why. The most common fault that I am finding, and I had a difficulty with my own car some years ago, is you will have some Torx bolts, okay? These are Torx T20s, okay? With a self tapping thread okay that self tapping thread just screws well in to the actual plastic of the housing okay so it will key in quite nicely what happens though is that these bolts get so rusty they get soft and they round on the head and that's what's happened to nicks that i'm going to demonstrate all four bolts that hold the throttle body onto the inlet manifold gone rounded seized and there's no way about it the only way is cutting it off and having to drill them out in fact this is not the first second hand manifold that nick bought because he bought one delivered it to his house showed me a photo and guess what he found he found remains of four of these fasteners in there snapped so it needed to be drilled out. Yes, that is, this is a real problem. And if you have got this problem, the only way you're gonna do it is by drilling it out, but then you can drill too much of the plastic and you need a bigger fastener. My advice is do exactly what we've done here. You're gonna to have to bin it. You're gonna to have to bin the manifold and bin the firm, the thermostat, the throttle body, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, talk about thermostat housings. I might have given the game away with what the problem was. Mmm, thermostat housings, lovely. Um, but that is, a, this is a second-hand throttle body to go with this. I recommend this. No, you know, messing about. You've just got to get yourself a second-hand one. Probably about 45 quid for this and 20 quid, 25 quid for one of these. Believe you me, it'll save your weight in gold. Do not get the aftermarket ones of these, by the way, because I don't trust their um, accuracy for... Uh, well, not machining, but plastic manufacturing. And this is plastic, you know, in the days where this was all metal on the inside of this bore here, um, which is crucial, I'm going to tell you. I've got the parts number just here on this. Yes, there's a few things that I'm going to go through, um, but I'm going to start with the smaller components and work my way around. So there's going to be a lot of talking in this episode before we bolt things up, because these are things you must know straight away. Next thing, this. This is out of my spares. It's been cleaned up. I've got a couple of these. These rubber ductings never give an issue. I have never known them to blow a leak or hole out. It's very high quality, flexible rubber. No need. But many owners do not have these clips. I've just cleaned these clips up. These are also from my spares. So I'll take the old ones off Nick's and put it in my spares. Um, they're very easy. They just have a sliding uh, piece here. Um, if I just demonstrate just say just move slightly down and you get a pair of these particular pliers which i don't have hold on there we go 
Lovely. Sorry about that. Blooper there. <laughs> There's another tool you need apart from these three. Uh, yeah, you need this. You need some water pump pliers just to latch on to the suit two sides and bring them together okay you just need to latch on oh there we go see i'm doing it already but you need to be very very patient and you will do it you'll click them together quite nicely and um, but you you need these please okay but that is the rubber ducting out the way okay uh, i'll just move this across um over here we have an in the, a complete fuel rail um now this fuel rail has got two mounting points okay one here and one here and it bolts to the top of the inlet manifold now for the purposes of today i'm not bolting this i haven't got the bolts anyway i've got to take them off nick's car but it basically just sits like that it sits like that okay just on there on there and the injectors are basically pushed into the engine um, over these o-ring seals i have never known these o-ring seals to give a problem and i have never ever known one of these injectors to actually be diagnosed as failed never i'm sure one person might be able to say oh yeah i had a failed one well that's interesting because that's news to my ears these were made by siemens very very high quality items and the rest of the rail is made by Visteon. Uh, again these fuel rails it is just literally a solid piece of aluminium they do corrode so i gave this a bit of a clean up and um, so it looks nice and a bit of a polish so it looks good on the next car it's just a steel tube that holds the pressure this fuel regulator takes a vacuum here off one of these okay now there is a vacuum that comes through from the throttle uh, body through these holes through those vacuum through one vacuum line the other one goes to the evap charcoal canister and one of them takes a feed all the way to here so that this regulator can either basically control the amount of fuel going back to the tank that goes back to the tank okay so that's the return line that bolts to that and that regulator is supposed to keep the rail at pressure depending on what throttle pressure is given so if you increase the throttle if the throttle if the gas pedal is open there'll be more vacuum in here therefore more vacuum going to that okay but these very rarely fail the only time i've actually seen these fail is when the diaphragm actually goes in it and it starts leaking if you see fuel smell fuel around this it needs replacing um you cannot go to ford for these i have a number of these in stock um on a, a service exchange basis a good one for a good one etc um but i will not swap one of these for a bad one because otherwise i'll start losing my own supply um but um they don't generally work the same um it's very difficult to tell if they're wearing or starting to go um but as i say i swapped a couple of these to try and look at my fuel trim issues and this rail works perfectly the injectors are ready to go and these injectors have done ninety nine thousand miles and you know what the one on Nick's car has done 155 like the rest of it. So uh, he's going to give me his old set and he's going to get a nice new set of injectors just as a, a bit of a goodie um, because we might as well since we're taking all this off. Sorry, this keeps happening. I'm just going to go with these. By the way, these are just clipped in, by the way. They're just clipped in. You just move the clips off the ledges. Just get a, a screwdriver, pry it off the ledge and you can move these clips Look, I can move it already. It just slots in and these will just pull out. But as I say, these O-rings, they never give a problem unless you're aggressive pushing this into the engine. But that is for another episode as well, okay? Um, we've got a couple of these wiring clips. Just, they sit on the top here. They, they tend generally go this way. So get this here. Okay, this is the ledge on the top. It, this is how it sits in the car. Got a clip here for a wiring plug. I'm just going to explain in a second. But these will just latch on with this spring clip. They can snap around here. Um, this one goes this way because this is the one for the throttle cable. It's much more small than the other hoses. Um, so it will go on here and the other one will go on here. Simple as that. Two. And these are intact. And the one on Nick's car is actually broken. So that's a bonus. It's another reason why this is a, makes an absolute perfect sense next one well i'm actually going to avoid this because this is another discussion for another uh, second um we have got a couple of gaskets but i'm just going to go through this we have the wiring plug what is this wiring plug for easy it is for the math sensor uh 
the map sensor, Andrew. Get it right. So on the intermanifold on this side, because you've got the alternator that sits here. Okay, got these octopus legs. I, could, I do call them octopus legs because of the way they sort of bend round um, really nicely. They are a smaller diameter of the 1.6. There'll be 1.6 has got fatter, bigger ball pipes. And this sensor, which is a brand new sensor, um, it says FIE on it, but it's um, it's a Cambiari. Cambiari are a good make, and this is what I told uh, Nick to go for instead of a genuine one. I mean, the genuine ones, by the way, are ridiculously expensive, um, and these work perfectly fine. And in fact, these do not fail um, with the regularity that a MAF sensor does. MAF sensors are far more complicated and bigger and more expensive, and therefore they are also more prone to failing. Um, but this is just inserted into this hole and tightened in by a couple of bolts just here, uh, T15s, okay? And that will be slapped in. And the wiring plug goes from there, okay? And it would kind of go and be bent all the way around here. So it would just kind of hang around here. Um, sorry, I'm doing this with one hand and the clip will just push into that that little clip there. It's like a fir tree clip, yeah? So it would just kind of, um, excuse me, it would kind of sit like that on the car and then the wine loom will join to it. That's what that is and that's what that sensor is. Um, then we have got, now I will explain this. We've got a few ports here. So we've got the vacuum ports, one for the fuel regulator and one for the evap canister. So these are important. They take a throttle, a vacuum from the throttle um, at a certain RPM and they will use their magicry to actually make something work. There's a science behind that. There has to be a certain pressure to actuate the evap solenoid um, and well valve I should say and the fuel regulator valve this is the servo pipe join now this is where the servo pipe okay this will take a vacuum to the brake servo it will take a vacuum again from the manifold under pressure and it will take it to the servo okay that's what that's for it just plugs in and it's all ready to go in this this never fails this red clip then we've got this weird piece here. Has anybody thought about what this could be? Well, I've got some theories about this because it looks like it should have an insert. And you see these mountain holes where the bolt, where the fifth, well, third, well, is it 10? I can't remember actually what size of bolts they use. Actually, I think it's 10s or 13s to bolt the inlet manifold on. You've got a brass collar. These don't have brass collars inside them. It's just it's just hollow. What, what is this? It looks like some sort of valve or diaphragm. I've got this theory that this is for a market that Mark 1s were, well, were, with this engine were obviously entering and there was some certain valve that was on this, something maybe to do with emission control I'm gathering, but it was never fitted to the UK and it's just blanked off here, but you can see the shape of it. So if you're wondering what this is, I've got a feeling that this is a valve for emissions, but only in certain markets. Does anybody know or does anybody have a Mark 1 where this is used? Please let me know. Maybe drop me an email. I'll be fascinated. Then we have up here the holes for the, uh, what is it? Uh, what is it now? I've forgotten. Oh, yes, of course. It's this. It is the inlet, uh, the idle air control valve, which just sits there like that. Okay, with the wine loop goes to it from sort of up here. And it would just sit like that. Okay. Now, I'm just going to demonstrate what happens with this. So air comes in and it goes through this little hole here. And if I get my torch. Okay, now we can see what is kind of more or less going on. I do apologize if this is not ultra perfect. But down here, we've got an idle bypass. Now, when the throttle is closed, and this is where I'm gonna to have to come in with the throttle here. It sits like that on the car, okay? When the throttle is completely closed, you've got a hole there on the left-hand side. That is the idle bypass. It allows air to go through there. Into, that goes through there. If I just put my finger in, I don't think you can see it. Oh, yeah, you can see it. There we go. There's my finger. Yeah, 
just about. Ooh, my finger's quite thin. <laughs> Not many people can do that. Um, that is your air import, okay? That is where the air enters the inlet manifold when the throttle is closed at idle, okay? It goes through here. Then, if you see the way it's, this idle valve sits, the idle control valve with this stepper motor attached, these rarely go wrong. Again, this is from my spares. Say thank you, Nick. You'll say thank you in the comments, as usual. Um, it will go through this hole, okay? Now, what's happening is this solenoid is actually blocking this passage to this side because, well, how can air go from there to there? Because this is an open channel. If I, if I stick my finger and without actually getting my finger stuck, um, hello, oh, no, can't see it. There we go, hello. There's my finger. I've just stuck my finger right in and almost got it stuck. Don't do that, guys, because you'll be calling the... <sighs> going to A&E with this. Oh, yes, I just put my finger in me in that manifold. <laughs> Not good. Um, so it will go from there to there. That will be the normal passage. But the idle control valve is supposed to control that idle by making sure that the stepper motor retracts in micro steps and that basically brings the idle really smoothly and i can't actually actuate it here if i can get my finger in there we go can you sit no you can't actually i'm trying to just do that with my finger but basically there we go can you see that i'm moving it back there you go i'm sorry one-handed there you go i've moved it back and it's shut okay that is controlled by the motor and it will allow just a bit of air to pass from that side to that side to go in straight into the engine to keep your engine from stalling and that is how that works there are a couple of gaskets to that and i'm just going to demonstrate that in a, a second so that Rarely gives a problem, and I've cleaned it up for Nick. He's very pleased about that. Lovely, just like mine. I'm doing it exactly. I'm giving it the treatment mine had. So, map sensor. Yes. Throttle position sensor. Yes, we're going to have to come to this because the throttle position sensor is mounted on this side and it is running off a track. Oh, believe you me. Now, this is a genuine Ford one. Now, in the last episode, Nick announced that we have a genuine Ford position sensor that um, a parts company gave to him in exchange for one that he was supposed to have aftermarket, which he bought as an aftermarket one. Um, it turns out they sent him a genuine one. Why? I don't know. I don't know if they had it on the shelf, but something funny was going on there. Now, Nick has given me permission because I'm sure you'd agree that it's probably proportionate and he understands this and he, he was very much thankful for this work. And as a little bit of a payment, he's given me the, because it, it hasn't cost him anything. The genuine Ford position sensor has been allowed to go on 50 shades. Thank you, Nick. Your generosity is being rewarded here. Um, I have to report that that throttle position sensor has made a huge difference to my Mark 1. I'll be reporting on that in a different episode. But for the purposes of this episode, this is the famous 50 shades TPS sensor. It has done 92,000 miles. So significantly less miles than 155,000 that the original one would have done that is currently fitted to Nick's car. Yes, I know. So anyway, they rarely give issues, but the track wears out. Can you clean them? You can have a go, but I think they're still not going to operate good because... I never thought that at 92,000 miles, my car was going to benefit from a new sensor. So I fitted it with Nick's permission and I have to report some differences, I'm afraid. So this isn't quite as good as the new one, but in retrospect, it's better than the um, 155,000 mile one. And it just literally will slot onto the side. And that is it. We now have a couple of gaskets. I'm going to go over this in a second. We have um, 
an inlet manifold gasket. Oh, yeah, well, this is, I'm afraid, I just have to say this, you have to buy two of these. Um, yeah, there was a bit of a mistake, but don't worry, Nick's got the other one, so I can't fully rebuild it today. Um, but it goes on this side, one there, one there. They go in two pieces, They're not, it's not one piece, it's a two piece, but it's a genuine Ford one. Uh, we haven't got the, have we got the parts number? 107-2063, okay? Now, this is applicable for 1.4. I'm not certain that it's the same for the 1.6. I've got a feeling it is. I've got a feeling it's exactly the same, but just check to be sure. We also have a gasket here for the throttle housing to inlet. Yes, we need a gasket that goes between these two pieces to prevent air leaks. We have not known, I've not known on a Mark 1 to have air leaks at this early age. So, but it, you've got to do this. You've got to change all these because I tell you what, these go flat. I've got an old one in my spares and it's much more flatter than that. There's a certain amount of crush and it will go here where the ribs are all the way around. Don't take a risk. Change your gaskets, especially your inlet gaskets. Just change them. Do not take a risk. I'm putting stuff back on and trying to save a few quid. These are cheap, old school. You do not miss the change of gaskets when you take things off like this. You must change them. Unless it's been recently changed, unless like we have to take this inlet, gas, uh, inlet manifold off again for some reason in the future, I doubt it. But if there's a problem, we, we know we've changed it in the last couple of years and I reckon that's good enough. But if it's a, a couple of years older than that, if it's more than a few years old, change it again. Then we have this gasket down here. This gasket is a very unobtainable one. I managed to get a genuine one for my car years ago. This is the one that came with this inlet manifold gasket. I will take the one off Nick's old one with the valve, which I'm going to take into my spares because these are unobtainable. Um, you can go to Poland. Po the, the Polish apparently make them for about 17 quid with a couple of weeks delivery. And I was like, well, for 17 pounds, I'm not, I'm not paying that sort of money. And we agree that kind of we found a good one. And the, the problem with these is they go a bit flat. It goes here, okay, it's really critical. They go a bit flat over time, but that looks in good state. Just check that they haven't gone too flat. They should be a little bit, basically they should stick up above the level of the surface. Just rub your finger along. If you can see it's sticking up, it's, it's fine. It's got enough give in it. It's important that it's got enough give in it. Now, next thing, I'm sorry if this is too much for you guys, but there's a lot to get through here and there's a lot to talk about. It's really crucial that all this is optimum. It's efficient. If it isn't, I hate to think, the TPS sensor is an example of this. How many Mark 1s are running on TPS sensors that are not throwing a code, but they're worn? This is warm. This is one off my car. This is warm, but only a little bit. I've seen worse, probably felt worse. Nick is definitely going to get the benefit from this. But anyway, we have a new secondhand throttle housing. I have had to respray this bracket. This bracket can rust really, really badly. It sits like that in the car. Um, these bolts, I didn't even attempt. There's three bolts holding this bracket on. One, two, and three. Don't even attempt to get them off. They don't even come off at all. Uh, these are starting to round on me. Oh, where have we had this before? Don't bother. Just paint it in situ. Just mask up. Just make sure that the, the even the stop screw, do not mess with this stop screw, but you shouldn't mess with it. Leave it. It's calibrated to this stop screw. Okay, just leave it. Okay, return spring looks nice and clean. This has been in my ultrasonic cleaner. Clean, clean, clean. Okay, I'm going to talk about that when we rebuild this. Um, but overall, there aren't many problems. That's where the throttle cable goes on. You will have a lot of Mark 1s are missing these. You will have this rubber grommet, okay, and then you'll put you'll slip the throttle cable on, but there should be a circlip, a sort of like a, a V fork, but often it gets lost. I've got mine, but Nick's missing his um, because they, they just go missing over time. But um, as you can see how clean the bore is. Now there is an instruction note which I'm going to explain now. Um, attention. Do not clean inside the throttle body 
or adjust the hard stop screw special coating on throttle plate and the bore. Right, obviously this is the throttle plate, the last item of the jigsaw, and it, why is it out? Well, for a start, you need to clean this, and you're not cleaning it unless it's removed. You've got to take the two screws out that hold it on, and they are here. They are T15s, they're tiny. Two, two of them. You must click, get this out and clean it round the side. We do not want dirt and rubbish around the sides here, okay? That is going to impede the flow of air and you are not going to get a responsive throttle nor a smooth one. It really does. Do not rely. A lot of people say, oh, I've got my idle valve's broken because it, it's, it's not idling properly. I reckon it's nothing to do with that. I reckon half the time it's not even because this is dirty. That's the first advice I give. Just clean this out and make sure it's clean. Carb cleaner squirted into there. But if the problem persists, I think it's to do with this. I think a lot of Mark 1s are suffering from these discs really getting dirty. But it makes no sense to just clean this and not clean this, which is why I think doing a job like this has got to be done in the way that I'm doing it today. And that is really important. You can do little jobs like if you're in a bit of a rush and you can get your screws off, take the four screws out if you can. Hopefully they don't round on you. Then you can get all this out, take this out, clean it out, put it back on, Job's your, Bob's your uncle. But we're gonna to come to this in a second. This is also part of the problem. But we are just gonna slip that back in, bolt it back in. What did I clean it with? Oh, you naughty boy, you're not supposed to use that. If that makes any difference to your Mark 1, well, it hasn't made any difference to mine. Now, some people will argue that if that coating is removed by carb cleaner, along with dirty deposits, because we want that spanking clean, it could increase the idle speed because you've actually wiped a coating away and therefore the bore is microscopically bigger. Now, that could be uh, a number, that could lead to a number of things. It could mean that your idle speed is fractionally higher, okay? But on a Mark 1, that's not a bad thing because I always think that the programming in the ECU allows for too low an idle, especially when the air con's on. We all know them focuses. Um, you know, where the air con kicks in, you hear the clutch kicking and suddenly you, you come to a junction and it's just... It's just fractionally below where it should be and it shouldn't be like that. So it's not a bad thing if the idle goes up and it will go up an absolute fraction. We're talking about 20, 30, maybe up to 50 RPM. That is nothing. So maybe it's all for the better if it gets wiped. I did this job in my own focus. You can use carbon intake cleaner. If you're scared, use contact cleaner. Use electrical contact cleaner, wet wipes and something gentle just to degrease the, the inside of this. We want this clean. We want it free from abrasives and everything. It's clean. It's, ah, there's absolute minor wear to this. So I'll just point you in here. We want that absolutely clear. Now, can we see a mark? You can see a mark where the throttle disc has just been sitting. There we go. There's a mark just in there, but it's very, very, it's very minor. Can we see one there? Yeah, can you see that mark? Just there, where my finger is, just there, yeah. It's just a little mark, but it's not too much. It's not scored or scratched. Just check this plastic ball for any scoring, scratching, because if we have any scoring and scratching, that is going to lead to some localised heat build-up with the air. Believe you me, these manifolds get pretty warm with the airflow. Um, not, it's not necessarily a cooling effect. It actually can act as a heat shrink, almost, um, which is what most people will tell you when... Uh, they're uh, porting their engines, and that's porting inside the engine, not this, but still, it's just something to be aware about. So, apart from that, there's nothing to be all about. Rusty bracket, rusty stop screw that you shouldn't touch, a coating that you don't need to worry about too much, and a disc that you need to clean this up as squeaky bum clean as you can. You could eat your dinner off that, okay?
We're going to fit all that in a second, but we're going to go to this. Cleaning the inside of this inlet is the most important thing you can do. Now, I've explained most of the components on here, where they fit. If you've got an automatic, you will not have a hole for the map sensor. We do not have a map sensor on the 1.6 automatics. This on my car is blanked. I have a unique manifold. It's as simple as that. Although I'll tell you what, you could probably fit one of these because it's got an O-ring seal. You could probably put a 1.6 manual inlet on there, put that in and just use it as a blocker. But, in, but usually 1.6 automatic owners will need to search for a manifold off a 1.6 auto because this is blanked off. Um, but the good thing is I can just stick the torch through there um, and I'll just bring you around so we can see the inside. There we go. Can you see in this? I'm just bringing it around. Look at that, just shining it through the, the, ma the maps. Uh, yep, the map sensor hole. Sorry, I keep using my words wrong. Um, and we will have some ports on the that side, just on this side here, because obviously we've got the ports on this side. So we'll just shine it up here. There you go, you can see all the ports. Look how clean that is. That is the result of using car cleaner, elbow grease, cleaning, cleaning, cleaning you will find an oily film of, not carbon, but just byproducts of combustion, incomplete combustion, that will go back through the inlet valves and back up these pipes into this manifold system, and you will need to clean that, please. And you're also going to have to clean these pipes. Yes, you can't get in these pipes so thoroughly, but you can try try and clean as much down these ports as possible please we want them nice and clean just shine that in there look at that clean just micro scratches to the plastic but we don't want any gouges okay because we want the air to flow we want it to flow smoothly through that come past this smoothly we want it to go in there smoothly and flow because the more that it flows better and is not impeded by crappy carbon and soot and nasty rubbish that goes on inside there how many focuses i've got this oh it's unbelievable um but yes please 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 clean this thing clean it to heaven almighty and even though you can't remove all of it, you can remove most of it. That is squeaky bum clean now. So that's the trick to success with a Mark I in at Manifold. We're doing all this to make sure that the air is flowing as smoothly and quickly as possible. And I'll tell you what, Nick, George is going to fly. And I'll tell you that, even for 1.4. And when people say that 1.4s on a Focus Mark 1 are severely underpowered, not appropriate and rubbish, well, you've obviously driven one with absolutely no service and maintenance done to it whatsoever, because it will not. These engines are capable, I suspect, of about 80 to 90 horsepower, but Ford deliberately detuned this engine to 75 because it would take away too many of the sales from the 1.6. That's a top fact, that is. We have also got this port at the back of the manifold. So we've got this port on the back side, okay? That, I also believe, is something to do with the Avap canister. The Avap canister will take a vacuum from this line and it will go all the way to the back, I'm pretty sure about that. I'm, I've got to uh, check my um, my locations for that, but I'm pretty sure we've got another uh, VAP line that will go to the evaporator canister. Um, it will actually go to that canister, and it will purge, um, allow to purge a lot of fuel vapors out using pressure from the manifold again. Now the canister will deliver the fuel. Um, the ex excess fuel to this point. This is where it is. Your fuel vapors from your fuel tank get delivered here, okay? They get delivered right here. That's important. Secondly, 
The biggest thing of this manifold, which we haven't got today, but we've got to swap off Nick's uh, current one because he's bought a genuine one and it's fitted, is the breather hose. We have the pi a pipe there and a pipe just down there. Just, sorry, shine the torch down there. Okay, we've got the other pipe just down there and the pipe there, okay? And the breather hose will kind of go in there and it will stick out and come out here and it will go into a little valve that sits off a block on the engine. We're gonna discover that in part two. But basically, that PCV valve will only allow crank case vapors out. It will stop oil vapors getting through and only oil vapors will go down the breather line straight through into these two pipes and it will come, strangely, I'll show you where it comes, here. Can you see that hole there? Just here, yeah. That will go straight. I'll, I'll tell you, this is how the gasket would normally sit. So the gasket would sit around this bridge here. The hole for the breather is here and it will go straight in through this slot here into the inlet manifold and blown through the engine. That is your crankcase emissions. Straight through the vat pipe, through the breather, through this hole, through this hole, through that slot, into there, into every single cylinder. So anyway, that is your crankcase sorted. We've got a genuine breather hose. Please change your breather hoses. But breather hoses, that's old news. People have known about breather hoses for many years and there are not many problems with them. But anyway, I've rabbited on. Let's fit this baby up. <laughs> Right, okay, now excuse the lighting here because my lighting is a bit uh, sort of all over the place here, really. I could do with a, an overhead person doing this, um, but we'll just make do with that glary torch today. The first job is probably one of the easiest. We're going to fit the air control valve. So we need the gasket, and the gasket will sit with a notch just here. So we'll just Flip this in and just make sure that it's sitting nice. You've got these lugs just to make sure that it sits rather nicely on here. Perfect, 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 perfect. I've cleaned this to a T with GT85 and all sorts of, oh, it's clean. It, you could eat your dinner off this. Um, these do get really dirty. They get really dirty in these sort of grooves here. Um, I'm constantly cleaning mine, um, but we could just slip that on really nicely now. Uh, we just need a couple of bolts. I'm just going to hold you steady. Now these are two. These are two uh, eight millimeter bolts. Okay, just thread it in, and just by hand. This should go in really, really easily. Okay, and then the other side should go in quite nicely as well. So just pop that back in. Lovely. Okay, so now we need the eight mil spanner. Use a socket as well. Don't over tighten this. There is a torque setting, but just nip. Okay, it is plastic. Just snug is required. Nothing more. We don't want to snap the plastic. See, the point where it starts moving the inlet manifold is enough. There you go. Nice and snug. That is not going to cause any air leaks because that's a good gasket and that's a good in manifold right okay now we obviously we're going to put the vacuum lines on all the server and stuff when we swap it and there's another thing to actually point out with the inlet manifold there is this is the screw um sort of fitting uh, the fitting for the screw that holds the dipstick against the inlet that screw was also seized on nicks and it is a habit they just they just round so you might have to cut it off okay and drill the rest of it out or hope it snaps off completely and then find another screw and just another Phillips screw will do. And that's really it. Anyway, I'm now going to fit the math sensor at this side. So literally just got two sides and just pop it in. It's got an O-ring to it. There you go. It just sits nicely against there. Lovely. And we've got a couple of T15 screws, which are these small ones. Yeah, very small ones indeed. And they're just going to slot in rather nicely if i just keep on dropping them andrew that wouldn't be very helpful um and then just 
there we go lovely not too tight but there's an o-ring seal there just to stop air leaks and it as i say it measures the absolute pressure inside this manifold modern cars now use a map and a math sensor together but on a focus mark one you either got one or the other fantastic ford cheapening out there big style and what we can do as well we can put the wiring in place so the wiring will go kind of like that plug this like that in there there we go the fir tree clip clicks in it should sit like that and then you put the rest of the plug on there there we go there we go all the nice wires are cleaned up that is looking really really good that is ready to go okay now uh where do we go next well we're gonna have to concentrate on this side of things but we're going to have to build this thing up first okay now i will probably finish off by doing a gasket over here before we go to the throttle housing um it is this um, i'm just gonna open this pack it up very exciting Woo. yes well as i say these things go flat over time and again there's no uh, real way of doing this just make sure these notches are lined up with here okay so just pop that one in there um, they can go on either side there's no like left side or right side um, this will go on that side either you know it doesn't matter um, just make sure you've popped it in and it's sitting really nice just push it in with your finger no need to get a hammer guys come on just you know just use your fingers um, and then it'll be nice and flush and that is ready to go on that's a nice fit gasket that is waiting to just stand up nice and tall there we go lovely done right that can go in the bin of whatever um now well we can put this on in a second but i've got to put this on next now this is going to take a bit of fiddliness so i'm going to uh, stick you on the tripod here right so you can see what i'm doing the bracket is there so this is how it's facing in the car this is the way it's supposed to go so the fixed side is always up north okay it sits in like that but how do we get it on easy what we've got to do is turn it round, and we've got to turn the throttle now this is might require two hands but you've got to turn the throttle so that spindle is right ahead of you there you go look see that and now we can just slot this in I believe if you get this wrong, it won't shut properly. Oh, yeah, that's gone in. That's gone in. Did you hear that, guys? Did you hear that? It's gone in. If we just shut it. Oh, dearie me. What have I done? No. Oh, dearie me. It won't shut. Why is that? Because I've put it in wrong. I'm glad I've shown you that because we all do this. So what you've got to do, turn it back round and, uh, excuse me, do it the right way. That won't damage the uh, the plastic, by the way. Hey, there we go. So there you go. Now, as I've said, the thick bit is on the top side, on the north. So the thick, the thick piece up here goes up top. Okay. You, you just get it. If you get it the wrong way round, just flip it round and do what I've just done now. Just showing you exactly how you can get it wrong. Um, believe you me, I've done it enough times on carburetors. And obviously, this part, this gasket. Um, the throttle gasket, really important, 107, 1914, okay? It's probably the same size for the 1.6. Um, obviously, you can't, be careful guys, you cannot put a 1.6 manifold on a 1.4 inlet, thinking, oh, I'm gonna get some more, I'm gonna get some cheap power if I get a bigger throttle. No, because all it's doing is it's making the air go wider because the ball is wide in a 1.6 throttle body, but then it's having to go narrow because that hole is narrow. You know, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like giving you a big fat tunnel to go through and then suddenly it narrows. It's like, you're not gonna go any faster than if it was just narrow from the start. So no, you can't, you can't do that. I never found out that actually. Um, but I'm sure somebody can come up with the answer to that. Um, I don't know everything, but um, I'll find out. And that's what I intend to do. But again, the notch is up here. This is the bit that you see in the car. You see, you'll see a little notch where you, you're, you, 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 if you're looking at it from the front, that's where your notch will be. And there we go. Look how much that protrudes. Look at that. That's how much it protrudes off the side that's a really good step that is that's exactly what you want from that 
um, and that is going to go straight on here 